Hello, my name is Candace Hull. I'm the chair of the litigation group at McNeese Wallace & Nurick in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Today I am here as a member of the Pennsylvania Bar Association's Appellate Advocacy Committee to offer a few tips for amicus curiae briefs. The literal meaning of amicus curiae is friend of the court. An amicus is not a party to the case, but presents a brief to the court for the purpose of providing additional information to the court that it may consider when rendering its decision. Usually this information relates to the impact of the decision on non-parties and potential policy implications that may flow from the decision. Often parties reach out to potential amici when their case is on appeal seeking their participation. The party can suggest to the amicus that they might want to file a brief in support of the party's position. It makes sense to do so if, as a litigant, you know the case before the court will have an impact on more people in the Commonwealth than just yourself. The rule governing participation by an amicus is found at Rule 531 of the Pennsylvania Rules of Appellate Procedure. An amicus brief may be filed by a non-party in support of either the appellant or the appellee during the merits briefing. The rule permits an amicus to participate without leave of court for appeals pending in the Commonwealth Court, the Superior Court, or the Supreme Court. The amicus brief is due on the same date as the brief of the party the amicus is supporting. The amicus can also file a brief in support or opposition to a petition for allowance of appeal pending before the Supreme Court, but only if the amicus participated in the proceedings below in the Superior Court or the Commonwealth Court. This is a reason for litigants to encourage participation by an amicus in support of their position at the earliest possible stage. That way, if the matter proceeds to the Supreme Court on a petition for allowance of appeal, the amicus can weigh in at that stage as well. In its brief, the amicus must explain who it is and why it cares about the case. That portion of the brief is known as the statement of interest, and it is a critical part of the amicus brief. It tells the court why it should care about what the amicus has to say. The brief must also disclose if someone other than the amicus itself paid the lawyer who is writing the brief. The obvious purpose here is to allow the court to be clear on the interest behind the brief. The heart of the brief, in addition to addressing the legal issues, should also address the practical impact of the decisions before the court and why it should consider carefully these issues before it and how they impact others besides the parties. The effect on non-parties is, in fact, the central reason to file an amicus brief. The best practice when writing an amicus brief is to coordinate with the party you are supporting to make sure the amicus brief contains unique arguments and is not just a restatement of the party's position. Participation by amicus in oral argument is rare. The rule permits it only upon the motion of the amicus and for extraordinary reasons. In requesting argument, it is helpful if the party that the amicus is supporting also supports the motion to participate in the argument. Bottom line, think ahead about what amicus might want to participate in your case. Coordinate with that amicus early and make sure they have something unique to say about the significance of the case at bar.